Hey folks, Steve here with yet another Fatal Alliances video. Uh, this is actually going to be my third video today. I uh, managed to get a lot of time away to record a lot of content and um, you know I finish one video, I start uploading it, I get it, I get it going and then you know I keep looking at the game map and I say well let's keep let's keep pushing, let's keep playing a little bit more. A uh, couple of things I want to correct right off the bat so and I try to put this in the the comments of the last video and I realized it just as I was done recording uh, there was the naval battle here in the Pharaoh's Gap where the Commonwealth uh, flotilla destroyed the subs that actually would not have occurred so um, actually, I think one of these guys was flipped but basically um, when subs are in a sea zone and you send units out there and you try to initiate combat in the C zone. Uh, the subs can always choose not to commit and not be involved in combat. And so, while you know a Commonwealth player might have still flipped one of their ships to try to start a combat to see if the Germans would have wanted to fight anyway, um, it, they almost certainly would not have chosen to do that. And so, I've sort of reversed time there. I screwed up. I I, I forgot. You know, it's, it's getting later in the day, and I have been busy, um, so my mind was kind of scattered. Uh, I, I completely forgot the subs just can choose not to be committed, and there'd be no combat there. So this whole situation here will resolve itself in the end of turn phase when there's the strategic warfare role where you know the subs will roll against the convoys, and then these ships being present will then roll to destroy some of the subs. So uh, we'll see how that plays out at the end of the turn, but for now that situation is gonna uh, stay uh, relatively stagnant. Um, we're gonna do a quick roll for weather. We rolled a 10. Um, so this is looking, you know, we're now looking at impulse uh, number nine for the central powers. We rolled uh, the 10 for the uh, weather, which I actually think isn't uh, isn't actually a huge deal. So it looks like there are now uh, storms in the northern monsoon and fine everywhere else. So for the sake of the world map, again, just like last time, I think we had uh, rain in the northern monsoon and now uh, it is a storm, which is going to prove to be a major issue uh, for the Japanese and their desire to invade uh, Truk and uh, Kwajalein, which was my plan for the Japanese units. So it looks like uh, we're actually not going to be able to do that, which is kind of a shame. Um, yeah, it's really too bad. I would have wanted to uh, be able to do that. So that's a bummer for the Japanese, for the Central Powers controlling the Japanese units. So, oh well. Um, fine everywhere else, so no big deal. In terms of the actions, I've drawn up the battle plan for that. So the Japanese are going to get their combined action, of which they're not going to do really a whole a whole lot, uh, to be honest. So I, I, they may just end up, you know, passing, you know, informally passing, unofficially passing, because there's not a whole lot for them to do. Uh, the Austro-Hungarians are going to do a land action. The Germans are going to do a land action. They're going to hope to do a little bit of um, some more pain to the allies before the end of the turn, hoping that the turn itself will end. They don't want to pass, they want to get a couple more punches in, uh, but we're looking at a 30% chance that the turn's going to end, and uh, the allies probably aren't going to be able to do a whole lot uh, anyhow a a as it is. So, uh, starting with our sequence of play, we're going to look at naval air missions. They're not going to be, there won't be any, they're going to be naval movement. So, uh, just looking at the situation here, so nothing for the Germans to do. Um, oh, uh, before I forget, uh, before the naval movement, uh, the Germans are actually going to spend uh, five offensive points, which is going to drain almost all of theirs now, to flip the von Lettau HQ unit. Uh, so now it is a uh, active, able to be moved uh, unit uh, for the game. Um, for the for the Africa map or the world map, so he's going to be good to go for the rest of the turn, 
for the rest of the impulse, and you'll see why I did that here in a minute. Um, okay, so we did that. So yeah, well now we're now we're looking at naval movement. Um, so what I originally wanted to do, if the weather was nice enough in the northern monsoon, which is this whole area with Truck and Kwajalein, was to take uh, these ships here, take a couple of the divisions from Japan, and plunk them down here and, and take Truck. And then they could look at taking Kwajalein another time. Um, but with that not really being a possibility, we need to kind of rethink, rethink that. Um, we might be able to do yeah, one, two, three. See, the south monsoon region's open, so we could try to send these guys. One, two, three, no. Uh, one, two, three, no. Yeah, see, I just, I took the took the wrong ships. I don't think we're going to do anything. So I think, for the Japanese sake, they're, they're not going to do anything. Um, I think what they will do is uh, they will have some ships return to port. So I think we can have these guys just go to Sing Tao. Um, so they just are going to do that so that I'm not doing nothing. So Japan's done. Nothing else to do here. Um, we could potentially take one of these islands, but they're really useless. There's not a really good reason to take them, because we can easily get to truck and plop units down, so there's not much to worry about there. We'll just look at, in the next turn, being able to take these guys and hit truck, and then maybe these guys could hit Kwajalein. We'll see what happens. I'd like to get down to Rabal too, but the Commonwealth may be able to take that in, uh, in due time. Um, just maybe the way this plays out. So, yeah, naval movement's done. Uh, strategic bombardment, ground strikes. So we are going to do some ground strikes. Um, and our ground strikes are going to come from over here with Big Bertha. And we're going to fire on this hex. There's only two hex, uh, two counters available to be flipped. So a five or less, and, uh, they will flip and we'll see. So the first, uh, we'll just do bottom to top. So the first uh, counter here is flipped. And the second is not flipped. Okay. So Big Bertha is flipped now for the ground striking. So we, we harmed the French a little bit with the idea I'm going to maybe try to do an attack here and knock some of these guys out. We'll see what happens. Um, I didn't. I wanted to flip both units there, but uh, I guess it's not going to happen. We'll have to see uh, something else. Um, so that was our ground strikes. Uh, any rail moves do we want to do? Uh, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't think we want to do any... What I should have done is let this unit stick in Belgrade, and then I could have railed it up, but now it's too far away to rail. So that's a misstep on my part, but we'll just go with it. Um, no rail. We're going to move on to land movement. So really quick, this guy's going to go up to Budapest. Um, down here, uh, let's see. This whole, let's see, this whole stack can actually move. And this whole stack can move. Well, I, I guess except for that balloon. And this can move, and this can move. And I think we'd have this artillery move up. And I think that is it in terms of the Austrian movement, or the Austro-Hungarian movement. So we're sort of getting set up for uh, the continued push into Serbia. Um, these two Austrian units are going to come up here, and they're going to seize that Polish resource. Um, so I'm going to make a note of that. Uh, turn 1, impulse 9, AH takes 
Polish resource. 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 Um, but I don't think that that is actually... Um, yeah, because that is a miner, taking that resource doesn't hurt Russia's morale because it needs to be a home resource. But that's going to help Austria-Hungary's um, sort of production is, is more resources. So that's good. Um, I could have had the Germans take it, but uh, I don't think it's really going to matter too much. So they took that. That's fine. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll see about combats here in a second. In terms of the land stuff up here, land movement, uh, we are going to have, I think, we're going to have one of these guys move up to here. I'm just going to put the division on top. I'm going to be taking a really risky move up here. Um, but, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, okay, I think that's all of the land movement that we wanted to do. Uh, now invasions and land combat. Well, there's no invasions going on. We're just going to do combat. So let's look at, um, is there anything over here that we want to do? So that's five, ten. Yeah, no, not going to happen there. Uh, nothing here. So let's check out this area. It's combat power of four. So if that's nine... It'd be 8, so that'd be 17, 26, oh yeah, oh yeah, we're going to do an attack here, I think, I think, I think, yeah, okay, um, alternatively, I can also do an attack here, and that would be 5, 9, 13, on... Six. No, that's probably not good enough. Um, I would want to attack here. Probably it's just the best, the best damage I can get going. So, uh, yeah, let's count this out. So, nine. I don't think I can do an offensive. No. Okay. So nine. Um, we'll include Friedrich in that attack, and we'll make that. Then there's eight more, and then we've got nine more. So that's 26 against four. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, six to one odds. Yeah, 6 to 1, so that's plus 12. It's unobserved, so plus 11. And I don't think there's anything else here. Oh, we get the engineer. Uh, so that's back up to plus 12. Yeah, these guys are about to get smashed. Okay. So, uh, we'll look at our combat odds. So, plus 12. Let's roll the dice. So at 28, okay, yeah, that's a. Uh, uh, these guys are destroyed, and that's going to give the central powers yet again um, more political points, and then uh, we're going to have. Uh, let's see. We can advance. Okay, so none of our units are going to flip, but they will flip if they advance. Um, we probably want our strongest units to do the advancing, so we'll have this unit advance and flip, and we'll have this unit advance and flip, and it's probably going to be more useful to have the engineer up here, and he'll flip as well. And that is a, another resource.
very good for the Austro-Hungarians. They're doing quite well. So that's complete. And then uh, the only other combat here, just it's not going to make sense to attack. So yeah, that's going to be uh, putting a hurting, some more hurting on the Russian morale situation with the, these Serbians just getting getting wrecked. Um, and uh, we'll see what else happens from here on out. They've only got a couple more units left. Um, they're going to get crushed. I mean, this has been a very strong... Uh, you know, we're, we're talking this is the first turn of the game, and the Serbians are almost knocked out already. So um, the Austro-Hungarians have done well here. They really need to finish this up, and then they're going to be running guys up here as fast as they can uh, to help push back the Russians at this point. And they'll also want to try to get Tirana in Albania, however that's pronounced, uh, to knock Albania out as well. That'll be another hit to Russian morale if they take uh, Tirana, so that's going to be kind of a, a, a need. Um, now let's look over here. Uh, let me check my battle plan here. So the Austro-Hungarians are pretty much done. Um, Japanese are done, so we just need to finish here. Um, Oh, the other other thing, I, I keep forgetting to do it because it's off this other map. I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to take a German morale marker. I'm going to clone it, and it's going to be a control marker. I'm going to leave it in North Rhodesia to show that that's been under German command, and it's going to advance now to uh, Rhodesia. It's going to take Rhodesia, and that's going to do a couple of things. So one... Um, I'll get back to my notes. Germany takes was it Salaberry? Salaberry. Let me get this a little better organized here. Germany takes is that Sal's Salisbury? Salisbury. It's kind of hard to read that, but I assume that's what it is. Salisbury. So uh, that's going to be minus one morale for CW. And then uh, there's going to be a resource that the that now can't be used by the Commonwealth. Let me see if it's... I don't even think we're... I don't even think we're railing it out of South Africa, come to think of it. Because this, these two convoys are taking the resource for South Africa and the other South African ones. We were ignoring <laughs> this Rhodesian resource anyway, so... Um, I don't think there's any way for this resource to get back to Germany, so it's kind of a, sort of a wash, um, and I'll just ignore it in the notes because I don't think I was using it, using it anyway. But critically, uh, yet another minor country capital is being occupied and controlled by the Central Powers. And so um, that's going to cause another morale issue for the Commonwealth. Uh, okay. I think all the other sort of Africa dealings I'm leaving alone for now. Um, I guess I could take Lagos, but, um, yeah, I don't know about that. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll ignore it. All right, so then, uh, let's see about this attack here. So this is... Uh, five, nine, so twelve, twelve French factors there, and they'd be attacked by seven, ten, twenty, twenty-eight. So that's two to one, so that'd be a plus four. Then plus three more for the flipped unit, so that'd be plus seven. Um, it would be unobserved, so that's a plus six. Hmm. Plus six. 
It's not great. I'd have to roll pretty good. I can't power up any of these guys. But it would now shorten the front a little bit. That's probably worth it. I think that's probably worth it. So let's give it a shot. Ugh! Twelve. So we lose a half unit. Mm. And everything flips. Well, let's just flip everything first and I will figure out how we want to lose that. It was worth it. I mean, I'll say that much. It was worth it. Um, it was worth a shot. So, we're going to lose half a unit. Alright. I think we need to break down a division. I haven't done that really yet. So let me do a quick look on that. Okay, after you finish reading, da, 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 you can break down. So we're still going to have a full core count for morale loss. Um, Okay, so let's have hmm. I can't do the garrison. It's going to have to be one of these guys. It really sucks because these guys are pretty good. Or two. It'll have to be this guy, this 4 2 here. Nope, not that guy. This guy. This. Okay, so he's going in the dead pile. And we're going to need to draw two infantry divisions. Oh, okay, we just draw the one infantry division. And, yeah, he's going to go here. Man, that sucks. Okay. Not the best thing to happen in the world, which is a bummer. Ugh. It's worth a shot. It really was. All right. And I think that qualifies as a major victory, so these political points will go up to 12. So good job, allies, for not losing, I guess. Um, okay, and then the other attack I was going to make, um, and this one's kind of risky as well, but I think it's worth a shot because of the repercussions of what's going to happen if I make it, is I think I'm going to have these guys attack this flipped HQ unit. So here's what's going to happen. If we win the fight against this HQ unit, and the HQ unit is in any way removed from the map, uh, one, that's going to be a great morale loss for the Commonwealth, and then it's going to nullify the foreign commitment levels, which means that for the British to come back into France, they would need to have an HQ unit to deploy here, and uh, I don't think they really have one in any good shape to do so. They're all far, far away uh, in Egypt and other places, and so they're going to have a tremendous time, a tremendously hard time, getting into France. So that's going to help the French front a lot if we can do it. If we lose some guys, okay, we lose some guys. Uh, the other thing is we're going to overrun these naval units and we may get to destroy them or grab them. And then this airplane unit is not going to have uh, the foreign troop commitment and it's going to be destroyed. So it it's worth the risk here. I think that's the way that works. It may not be in the hex, but once the HQ unit is gone and we finish the land combat step, 
there is not going to be an HQ unit to provide the foreign troop commitment. It is in a major power that it can't be in, and it is destroyed. Um, I'm not sure what happens to the pilot. I assume maybe they're destroyed. Uh, we'll have to look into that. So uh, let's just do the combat and see what happens. So this HQ unit by itself is a four. So he's got four strength. This is nine strength for the Germans. Obviously that's two to one odds, so that's plus four. Becomes a plus six for having uh, the uh, flipped unit. There's nothing else I can do to influence the combat, and neither can the Commonwealth. I don't have any planes that are in... Uh, in range. Um, I can't get the Luff Balloon in because the combat's happening here, not here, so I should have had that balloon moved here, but I didn't think I was going to do this at the time, so that's just the way the game goes. Yeah, everything else is it's just going to be a die roll. Um, it's unobserved, so it's a plus five is the final tally, which is really dangerous, but all I need to do is roll roughly average and I cause a huge amount of problems for uh, the 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 Commonwealth. So I think this is worth it. I mean, it's totally worth it. Even if I lose the battle, I mean, if I lose horrifically, that's one thing. But um, at this point, the worst I could roll is a 7. And that's pretty bad. But I think we can do better. So let's just see what happens. Bam! Oh my god! Wow. Man, this is... I'm glad I'm recording this, because this is incredible. This is an incredible role. So... Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. Alright. So that's a 25 result, which is... Uh, you know, one, this unit is just straight up gone. Added to the... Added to the... <laughs> added to the graveyard. That's a major victory for the Central Powers. So they're up to a lot. 32 now. Um, none of my units have to... Uh, none of the units have to flip. And... I can advance after combat. And I'm going to have this unit and this division advance after combat. They don't have to flip because they're mobile units. And now we're going to overrun these naval units. So uh, the rules on overrun happen in land combat. So let me... Uh, firstly, let me double check my advance after combat. Make sure there's nothing else I need to worry about here. Okay, so we're going to look at 11.9.6 for overrunning. We're overrunning naval units. Um, so uh, these naval units here are going to have to rebase, or at least they're going to try to rebase. I'm just going to move them over here for the moment because these guys have moved into Calais. Um, oh, they've taken an enemy <laughs> enemy port. That's another whoops. That's another political point. Each but each. Okay. Um, and we're in France proper now. Uh, <laughs> okay. So for each unit, what we're going to do is we're going to roll a die. We're going to roll for each face down or surprise naval unit there. Well, they were all face down. So if we roll five or higher, uh, the Commonwealth gets to keep the unit. If we roll a one, then the overrunning major power takes control of it, meaning they gain control of these units uh, until it's destroyed. It'll go into the repair pool, but we'll have it. And then on a roll of two to four, it's just destroyed. So, there's a 60% chance that these guys are going to get away fine, but there's a 40% chance that the uh, Commonwealth is going to lose these units. And I almost would rather them be destroyed than captured, uh, because captured naval units don't count for morale, but destroyed ones do. So, we'll just see how it goes. So first, we're going to roll for this 
uh, transport. And it is destroyed, so we will put it in the graveyard. Now we'll have this other transport. And it is a three. It is destroyed and goes into the graveyard, which is now Netherlands. And uh, we've got this little, what is it, this little cruiser. And we're going to roll for the cruiser. And we rolled a two, and that means it is also destroyed. Oh, man. And, okay, so now uh, the land combat step is done, or we're going to say it's done. And we need to now validate the foreign troop commitment. So let me do a quick check on how that's going to work. This is one of those weird areas that we kind of have to look at the rules a little bit and just try to validate. Um, because I'm not 100% sure how to interpret the, the verbiage here. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. A unit that ends any step in the unconquered home country of a friendly major power that it doesn't cooperate with is destroyed unless it started the step there. Or started the step elsewhere and the unit satisfies the foreign troop commitment. If it started the step there. Okay, so because this airplane unit started the step, the land combat step here. Um, it is not destroyed, actually. Okay. And and basically, at this point, it's going to still be there. I guess it won't be destroyed voluntarily until it gets overrun or something. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess this guy's just... You know, now that he's here, he doesn't have to leave and he isn't destroyed. So that's good for the Commonwealth. I mean, it's bad they lost every single ship, um, but, <laughs> I mean, glorious, glorious victory for uh, the, the Germans in this race to the sea situation here. Um, that's pretty, that's pretty intense. Uh, boy, and now, on future turns, we're going to look at, what, that's 5, 9, 13 on 4... Yeah, I mean, this could lead to a whole, you know, collapse of the situation, but the Germans need to get their their reserves added to the fray. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, the, Fre the French are going to be under pressure. And there's just no way to add more Commonwealth units here. I can't add any more units because uh, there simply are not... Uh, there's simply not enough HQ uh, troop, foreign troop commitment to uh, so supply them and allow them to operate here. So this is actually a really significant die roll. The fact that I rolled basically the maximum die roll that I could roll here on that combat. I mean, that's that's in, that's intense. <laughs> that's intense and that's critical. So, um, boy, this is, this is going to be interesting when we get to the end of turn. Okay, so uh, that is the end of the land combat. Are there any other... Uh, rebases, um, no, I guess not. I think that's it. Um, oh, I think we will have these guys, uh, rebase to here. Move the balloon up so they can assist in the next attacks that are going to be going on. Um... And uh, let's see. That's it. And then reorganization. So I'm going to go ahead and flip Frederick. And he is going to unflip the two core here. Uh, the engineer will remain flipped. That's no big deal. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're in good shape here as the central powers at this point. Um, so that's all done there, and okay. So that's the end of end of the uh, the the action here. So now we're going to just finally do the quick 
uh, check on the die roll. So again, we are at uh, impulse 9, so the number to roll is 3 or less, so a 30% chance that the turn's going to end. Uh, because all of our factions performed actions, uh, there's no change to the die roll. So let's see what happens. And it's a 10, <laughs> which means that the turn does not end. It's going to be the allied impulse on uh, impulse number 10 when we come back. And uh, for the allies, that'll be a 40% base chance the turn will end. Uh, the the allies really don't have a lot that they can do here. Um, they're sort of stuck in a position where, you know, at best they maybe have a 2 to 1 odd attack. Um, but I don't think that is going to be enough across the board. I just don't see. I just don't see it. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, there might be a lot of allied passing here because they don't have a lot of options. Um, a lot of stuff's flipped. The Russians don't have a lot more they can do either. Uh, They've got most of their stuff flipped. And they're out of offensive points for the most part, so that just might be the end of the turn anyway, depending on how we go here. Um, yeah, this will probably be a pretty quick, pretty quick run. Uh, in fact, I'm probably... Uh, you know what? Uh, this, this video is at 36 minutes. I think I'm going to go ahead and just run the allied turn because I don't think there's a whole lot that they can do here um, mostly because you've got uh, see they can't really do a whole lot more they've, they've done as much as they can do um, I think maybe what we'll just have them do is, uh, hmm, yeah, see, this is tough. We're kind of tough, t stuck in a tough spot because our transports, as the British got destroyed. And so we've got some down here, but now we were trying to get them, get them moved back. Uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the... Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do the Allied impulse here because I think we're about at the end of the turn, um, and I think what I'd like to have happen here is that the Commonwealth will do a combined action, and then uh, Yeah, I guess a combined action is going to have to be best here. Um, yeah, we'll do. We'll just do a combined action for the Commonwealth. We'll do a. Uh, uh, and we'll pass for the Russians, and we will pass as France because I just don't see where they can pull off any strong attacks. I mean, they've got a couple of places where if they fouled up, they would just be in bigger trouble than they already are. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do. So we will... Russia will pass, and France will pass and the Commonwealth will do a combined action. So the combined actions that we want to take here... Um, firstly, we're going to follow through with our transports moving. We're not going to bring them back. This is They're just going to have to do what they can. And I'm going to send these guys, uh, have them sort of do a return to base move to... Uh, well, let me see here. It would be uh, 
Uh, getting screwed up here. One, two. Yeah, so these transports are going to move one, two, and they're going to end up in Bombay. That's where they're going to go. So they're going to end up in Bombay, in India. And I think they need to flip face down now. So this is off on the world map. I moved them from the Red Sea through the Arabian Sea, and they landed here in India, and they're flipped face down. We need to get some of these Indian units out of India and move in, uh, moving along here, um, or at least maybe get these transports down here. Uh, get a transport down here to help move the Australian unit around. Um, let's see, any other naval movements we want to do here? Uh, I don't think so. We've just we've just gotten a really limited ability to uh, to do anything now, and it it's such a hurtful situation that we're in, having lost. Uh, the French HQ unit. So the uh, the only other thing I think I'll make sure to do is we're going to rail Austral the Australian territorial unit to here in Brisbane. It'll be flipped when he gets there, but um, I want them to be able to leave here and try to get up here somehow, but we're going to have a hard time a hard time doing it. We need the transports down here as soon as possible. So we're going to be trying to get them down. Maybe just the one, the one with the longer range. So come to think of it, maybe I wouldn't have, I would have sent him home. Uh, he has to go back to base after being out at sea, so okay. But the next impulse that the Commonwealth gets, they're going to go one, two, th one, two, Three in a Singapore, and then again it'll be one, two, three in another Coral Sea. It's going to take a while. Probably by the time they get there, the Japanese will have taken everything. Ah, it's tough. Well, something to decide for later, so. Um, yeah. So that rail move's done. I don't think there's any more land movement that we can really do that makes sense to do. Um, that was just such a hurtful turn that they wanted to get a couple of things out of the way. Um, and I think that's it, really. There's just not much more they can do. Maybe the only other thing, if we're going to have these guys... Well, I don't know. Got to figure something out what to do with these guys now. They're the only HQ unit they really have, and it would be good to try to get him somewhere. But um, and it looks like the French may just have to do this on their own. Okay, so every unit but one, or every faction but one, uh, yeah, every faction but one passed, which means there's a minus one or a die roll for ending the turn as the allies, so yeah, we're going to finish this up, probably. It's a pretty good chance the turn's going to end. Uh, let me just make sure of that. Yeah, if every major power except one on your side shows a pass, subtract one from the die roll. Okay, so everyone passed with the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth couldn't do a whole lot. So basically, if we roll a five or less, the uh, the turn is going to end. So it's a 50-50 chance. And <laughs> the turn goes on. All right, well, there you go. The turn goes on. So we go on to Impulse 11, Commonwealth, or not Commonwealth, uh, Central Powers. Wow, all right. All right. That was Impulse 9 and 10. Uh, probably won't be a whole lot more to do here. We're running out of gas on all fronts. So, again, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.